Good afternoon, and thank you for taking the time to join us today to learn about PICS and the form solution called FormTrap. My name is Nancy Oliver, and I'm a sales representative for PICS. Joining me today on the webinar is Marcus Peterson, our development manager, and Dave Stevens, our VP of sales. FormTrap is a great solution to take QAD output and convert it to what we like to call a pretty and customized form, which can be printed, emailed, or faxed. We will be recording this webinar today and we'll share the recording with you once it becomes available. In our agenda for today, I will provide an overview of PICS, offer highlights of our solution, and follow that by that by a demo. Our encouragement, we encourage you to send your, in your questions and they will be addressed individually after the webinar. I have included my email address on this page, but I will also have it up later for you to send in your questions. Our development manager, Marcus Peterson, will demo the form trap solution. Marcus has been with PIX for 18 years and is one of the chief designers of our document management product called DocLive. In the demo, Marcus will show some of the functions of form trap. This solution takes the basic QAD output and transforms it into a pretty, customized form, which is easy to read. Following the demo, we will go over some special packages and pricing available through this webinar. PIX is a QAD solution partner and has been in business for over 20 years. We have a deep understanding of the QAD system. In 2015, Progress awarded PIX the Innovator of North America Award. PIX not only designs software for QAD, but we also offer support. We have been deploying FormTrap for over a decade and have recently become aware that many companies still really have a need for this solution. We here at PIX realize this is one of our best kept secrets. We have many very satisfied customers who appreciate the results and the ease of use of the FormTrap solution. FormTrap is designed to be seamlessly integrated with QAD. It improves business efficiency by automatically emailing your invoices on the customized form instead of having to print and mail manually. The easy-to-use graphical user design interface eliminates the need for complex and extensive training. We can also design your forms for you. FormTrap has full color and true type fonts to make your corporate brand or logo stand out from the crowd. Individual document customization. Complex documents can be designed simply and customized to individual taste. Names, Signatures, pictures, barcodes, etc. can be attached to any document. Some features of FormTrap are also used to reduce the number of pages for each invoice. You can add barcodes and pictures. You can easily customize your forms with your company logo and any other pertinent information you need, as well as the tracking, the printing, and the QAD output. This slide shows just some of our key accounts who have been using FormTrap for many years. Our customers represent a wide variety of industries where utilizing FormTrap has been beneficial to their business. I'd like to share this customer quote from Greg Dryge at InterPower. InterPower is a premier supplier of power systems components worldwide and has been using FormTrap for almost 10 years. Greg told me personally that FormTrap is one of their top three software applications that they rely upon most. And FormTrap is used in many areas of their company, including their accounts payable, sales, and shipping department. Using FormTrap saves their company between twelve dollars to $15,000 annually by not only saving time, but labor costs and postage. At this point, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Marcus, who will show you a demo of how FormTrap works. And once that's completed, I'll come back and then we'll talk about some special package pricing. Marcus, are you available? Yep, I'm ready.
All right. Hello, everyone. Um, so I know some of you. I, I recognize some of the names on the the uh, the list, and that's great. Um, so I'm going to be showing you for for those of you who are already Formtrap users. Um, I'm going to be showing you some of the stuff you already know, and I'll dig just a little bit into uh, into version eight Formtrap. Um, but let's get started here. The, the general premise is, as Nancy said, we take your standard QAD output. So in this case, I've got an invoice here. And if I run it to text, this is what we're all familiar with and, and used to seeing. Um, you might print this on three forms. You might print it to, to a laser printer and, and send it out, you know, whatever. Um, very, uh, very difficult to not very difficult to read, but not easily readable. Not only that, we we see here I've got uh, seven items on this uh, invoice, and it takes two pages. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this same output, and we're going to send it to my printer, which is uh, FT Demo Two. And we're going to see what that gets transformed into. So this is, a, in this case, it's going to a, a, a file. Um, just pretend that this is an actual printer. Um, you can see that it's, it's taking it as a form trap output. It's prefacing it with invoice, and then we're naming the file the invoice number. And you can see we've got one page. We've taken all of those items. We've added some bold font where necessary. Um, you know, we could do italics. We've got color in here. Um, we could add barcodes to uh, to anything you needed on the on the page. Um, and then we've got a nice, easily readable trailer page. Um, you know, we could put your remit to information down here, so on and so on. I mean, it's wide open. But as you can see, it's a very nice looking uh, document now that could either be uh, printed or emailed or faxed. Um, or stored into a uh, document archiving solution, such as our DocLife product. Um, so that that is uh, the main transformation, and um, I will show you a, a purchase order as well, just so you can kind of see some of the dynamic uh, aspect of this. If we run the purchase order out to again to the FT Demo to printer, it's going to create a uh, subfolder here, and it's going to name the the document as such, and um, you know a decent looking uh, purchase order form. Again, um, it, it's wide open. We've got different size fonts here. We can do bold if we want, italics, um, different fonts. So so there's there's a lot of uh, you know really the it, it's wide open what what the uh, design you want. Um, can be with your your brand and so forth on there. Um, you can have the same form for multiple companies by uh, swapping out the uh, the logo up here based dynamically on the data coming out of your your QAD system um, and and your your shift to or your uh, company addresses and so forth. So there there's some nice things you can do there. You can also add terms and conditions pages. To uh, to the forms, um, so uh, that that actually showed up page two. Okay, so this is a two page. That's why it opened it up to page two. Sorry about that. Um, so you've got your sold to, your shift to, and your your basic uh, header information, and then you got continued on page two. And you all you can also do things like page one of two. Um, so it will repaginate the form and get you the most the, the most um, lines. Per page, and it, it does not use QAD's page breaks at that point. It, it develops its own page break routine, and you can do uh, page one of two, page one of ten, so on and so on. Um, so your customer knows that they're not missing any pages. Uh, very nice feature. One of the things you might have seen when I printed this closed invoice reprint, because I, I noticed it down here, is my my invoice was also emailed. So let me just do that again. We can watch it uh, watch it come in. 
So again, it's going to it's going to write it out to the the folder here, and then it's also going to get delivered to my email. The subject line can be whatever you want it to be. You could say invoice such and such for customer, and then the the company's name. Um, the, the the body of the email is for the most part static, um, but you know you put stuff in there like this, where please hit the reply button, and uh, if you if you have trouble opening it or, or whatever. Um, and again, the invoice is attached and named. And this could also go to a fax if you've got a fax server or internet faxing capabilities. It's the same, same thing. Um, these are just a couple of the forms we do. We found that most customers do invoices, purchase orders, and uh, sales orders are very common, and maybe customer statements. Um, th those are four very common ones. We've got uh, some examples um, of some things that we've done with shipping documents. Um, we had a customer, it was, it was Interpower as a matter of fact, that they needed their NAFTA certificates and they needed wiring diagrams and um, a packet of information to go out with their shipments. So using FormTrap, we're able to gather up that information and generate this packet that goes out with their with their shipments. Now it's a very customized um, procedure per their requirements, but the power is there to think outside the box with form trap. And uh, we've done lots and lots of implementations over the years, and I, I like to kind of brag that we haven't been stumped yet. Um, th there are a lot of hooks within FormTrap. Um, they, they call them filters, and they call them applications. So what we're looking at here is the, is the queue, and it shows the jobs that have gone through and, and kind of the transformation. We can look at the archive, and we can see the uh, the jobs that have went through. We can look at each of these things. So this is what was actually sent from the LP command from the. So this is its first trans. You know, it's, it's incoming. This is this is what happens first, and then we can look at each one of these transformations. This is the filter. I'm not going to get too technical here, but each one of these is a transformation that it goes through to ultimately end up with your your pretty form. And you can look at each of these things. It, it, it's it's very nice. Well. It's very nice to see what came in, and that, that's one of the things we have to look at. You know, somebody says my form didn't print right. Well, let's look at what came in, and we take a look at that. And we can start kind of tracing it through. But all of this is archived. It's a rolling archive, so it's not it's not like something you're going to use to um, to go back and search. Uh, the database can get uh, can get large depending on your your volume and uh, um, the the various things that you print through there. Um, but it's a rolling database, so you keep X number of days, and you can you can specify the number of days per queue that you want to keep. So you can go back and and find anything in here that you might need to. Um, so, but but what I guess the point that I'm getting to is there are filters here, and you can insert your own things in here to manipulate the input or the output per your needs. Um, so that's that's what I'm getting at. I think that we you know we haven't been we. We've been stumped, but we've always been able to find a solution because we, just because of the openness and the flexibility of the, of the product. Um, so, with FormTrap, many of you, the ones of you who are on here who are still version seven users, we haven't had a lot of you go to version eight forms because they, there's not not a, a real compelling reason at this point to do that. Unless there's something you want to do that we say, you know, hey, we, we can't do that in version seven, but we can do it in version eight. Um, so, you know, that would be something up to you. But I, I, I'll show you the designer just a little bit, and I'll show you the version seven designer. Um, it, it's it's similar um, to version eight. Version eight has some new enhancements, mainly with with regards to um, how it brings the data in. What it does now is it, is it transforms the data into an XML file that you could then, you know, do something else with, or you can use it to drive your form. Um, and they've got a whole set of rules to to determine how to break the page up into a true XML document, which does make the design a little bit easier. Um, but here's the version seven designer. You can see we've got kind of a a, a little bit of a WYSIWYG um, view up here in the upper frame. 
And then the lower frame, this happens to be a statement, the lower frame shows where we're mapping the, the details to. And it, you know, pulling it out of here, it's putting it up here. That, that's the general concept of it. Um, version 8 is, uh, is a little bit different. Um, what they've done in version 8, though, is they've consolidated what used to be separate pieces, which were your splitter, your identification rule, and your repaginator. So they've consolidated all of that into the, into the designer now. So you built one project out of here. So it, 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 it's nice. Um, and it does a decent job of converting your old forms, but you still have to handle that input coming in. And like I said, for current version 7 users, um, not a huge compelling reason to do that um, until you come up against something that uh, either you see that version 7 can't do or we say, no, we can't do that in version, in version 7. Yeah, it's got to go to version 8. Um, otherwise, the schooler is the same. The schooler, schooler will run both version 7 and version 8 forms. Um, and uh, there, there are lots of hooks inside the schooler also where you can actually um, you can send the invoice to multiple printers. So maybe you have one printer that's, you know, this is my, these are the ones that are going to get sent to the customer, and you've got another printer that, that has, uh, you know, green paper in it that you're going to keep your, your, your in-house copies on. So you can print to one or multiple printers. Um, in here, you can, you can transfer for data from, you can transfer data from one queue to another queue, um, which you might need to do for, for various reasons. Um, so very flexible, and, and I guess that that's the point that I that I want to I want to drive home is it is very flexible to meet um, meet your needs. Um, we can handle separate trays in printers if you want. If you have a, one of the big NFC printers that uh, um, that have lots of trays and you need to do multiple part forms, um, we can handle that that uh, that configuration as well. Um, so I, I just showed you a couple of the forms. I think the concept is pretty clear. Um, we're going to take your text output and we're going to manipulate it and do things with it beyond what uh, what you could even do in uh, in reporting framework. Um, so lots of hooks in there, lots of flexibility, and uh, the, the sky's the limit to how you want to design it. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Nancy, and uh, we'll let her conclude the meeting. Nancy, you there? Are you muted? Yes, I'm here. Thank you very much. I was pulling up my screen. Thank you, Marcus, for that um, presentation. I appreciate that. All right. Um, please keep in mind, if you have questions or if you need more information, you can email me and we'll share the answers, um, we'll share the answers to the questions anonymously with everyone in the group. Um, we are offering some webinar specials. We have two different packages to choose from as part of the special. We will also design the forms for you if you choose. Keep that in mind. Um, one of the packages is, is a pretty basic package that we find that most people are using, which is the customer invoices, purchase orders, and sales orders. A typical QAD customer can be up and running for 15500 with this package. And you could also customize a package, which could include um, things like checks, shippers, packing list, work orders, etc. Just note for this particular package, we can discuss the pricing offline, um, depending on which products that you need and which forms that you, you need. We are offering a 10% discount off of the software uh, for attending this webinar. Just keep in mind that the annual maintenance um, is not eligible for this particular discount. And I would like to thank you all for attending our webinar today. I know it's it's been short, but I hope you got the information you were looking for. Again, we can certainly provide more offline for you. I'm showing this slide. Um, it has my contact information. You can email me with any questions. Um, we've also recorded this webinar, so once it becomes available, I will also be sending everyone a link. I want to thank you all for attending, and have a great day.